It's very funny that all the coups are occurring in former French colonies. Maybe it reflects mm. on how they were trained by French. What do you I mean, think? not all of them. I mean, there was Sudan as well, but yes. I right. mean, all of them right now are French speaking countries. Mm. So uh, one of those changes that I uh, referred to at the top of the show is the very recent seat that the African Union has won at the G20. For you, is that something that will or can deliver substantive change in terms of improving the lives for Africans? And, you know, if, I allow, if you want to be a bit selfish, does it mean any specific win for Namibia itself? Well, let me start by expressing condolences to our brothers in Morocco and Libya who were struck by those quakes. As for your question, yes, well, any exclusion, because exclusivity spells conflict, inclusivity spells harmony. So wherever people can be inclusive, either in governance or whatever, that's a good, good beginning. Why do we in the first place leave some people out? idea is to be inclusive. So if now G20 is, after so many years, uh, thinking that Africa ought not to be outside and invite us to participate through AU, it's a good beginning. But when you come into already established institutions, like I was referring to the United Nations or Security Council, Veto Rights for Five, they are both still. So I hope we're not being invited to play a second fiddle. And I know how AU's secretary is treated administrative because he is not always equal among the heads of states. So I hope those in G20 who are heads of state don't treat our representative as second classes. As we're talking about shifts in governance, the, the continent's recently seen a rash of coups. Over the last two years, I think it's about eight coups, most recently uh, Gabon. Namibia is one of the continent's youngest democracies, 1990, when you gained independence from South Africa. How does that inform your perspective on uh, these, these reversals? And is there anything to be learned about what works and what doesn't when it comes to governance uh, in some of the, 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 the nations of, of, of Africa? Yes, we have to learn because coups are occurring now all of a sudden, but I talk about third wave of African leaders. We had the first wave of African leaders, extraordinary personalities, our founding fathers. Second wave were caught up in Cold War confusion, military coups and one-party state. Some one-party states were doing very well, like Tanzania. The third wave leaders, wherever we are, we want to be known that we are coming through constitutional means. We are going to honor term limits. Now there, is, there are reversals. It's not the Americans and British will tell, or French will tell us that you are doing our own thing. It's Africans themselves. AU will kick them out and say, you must go and correct that situation. That's very important. It's very funny that all the coups are occurring in former French colonies. Maybe it reflects mm. on how they were trained by French. What do you I mean, not all of them. I mean, there, there was Sudan as well, but yes. I right. mean, all of them right now are French speaking countries. Mm. I'm joking. No, I mean, but, you're, you're absolutely <laughs> correct. I mean, the vast majority are West Central Africa, yes. former French colonies. What do you So, see? therefore, you must not cling on power. Now, the third wave presidents, I'm trying to say, we are not big guys who are those extraordinary personalities. We are trying to come through constitutional means and therefore processes, systems, and institutions. Mm -hmm. When you go through that, you, you must save your term. And leave. I'm leaving my. I'm leaving next year. Mm -hmm. Not next year. Year after next year. <laughs> but I, I think you can hurry up to. <laughs> but I think that actually raises um, uh, a question about one another uh, election recently in the region that um, was that attracted a lot of criticism. Uh, Zimbabwe. Wait a uh, minute. Mm, uh -oh. What is happening in the United States of America? It's about Put elections. It into yeah, yeah. Now elections are perfect. When you see what is happening in America now. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's a, there's a problem there. I want to go and advise them there, because I, I set up good governance in Namibia. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about Africa's problems. You should be saying there was nearly a coup in the United States of America. You give it a different name, of course. Okay? And people caught up in Parliament. If it were happening in Africa, we could have been a talk, but we don't talk about that.
What no, is happening? I think there? that it is. Right uh, now, they want to this impeach is an opportunity to, to. So, what you're saying is that there are parallels between those who are setting themselves as. Uh, the ones who set moral and ethical standards in terms of what is and is not democracy yeah. and the, the problems that they're suffering and those who, who are the, they're dictating to, i.e. a lot of developing countries. Is that yes. what you're, what you're we, we are saying, saying? In Africa, we want to do our own bosses. We therefore take action when there is a coup. It's us. Mm -hmm. In the past, it was not the case. We were saying don't interfere in domestic affairs. That has changed now. It's us who will kick them out from AU or from ECOWAS or from SATEC. Not, not British, not Americans, not French. That's the difference. So we want to therefore be owners of our own mistakes mm -hmm. and good things too. As we are allowing you in France and in UK and United States to do your own mistakes and correct them. In terms of um, Africa shaping some of the global conversations about its own future. We've also seen Africa holding its first uh, climate summit. Were you happy with the outcome? No. Outcomes are always sounding so good, but the action hmm. lacks. We are not the polluters and so on, but we are the ones who suffer the most. But promises made since the one we had in Cairo. Nothing has moved. So how can I be happy? Mm -hmm. I wasn't there, but my, my vice president was there. We are getting statements made by people. Earthquakes are occurring in Namibia, not, but we have the floods, you know, and you have droughts at the same time. That's climate change. Mm. But we don't get any help for that. And how is climate change affecting Namibia? Have you brought yeah. any policies or programs well, to tackle policies, it? Policies, but it's very bad because mm. in our case it's different. Wildfires would occur very soon because of wind. And then you had droughts. While you have droughts, you have a flood. Mm -hmm. That's a contradiction of this, this, this situation we are facing. Some parts you have a flood, you have to help those people there. The other time you have a severe drought. Namibia doesn't get help easily because we have to classify it as a so called uh, rich country. Mm. And therefore, we don't get donations and so on, which is unfair. Country was under apartheid. How can you say it is our middle income country? I have been questioning that. When you know Africans were oppressed for so many years, first by Germans and now South Africans, we will come to terrorist genocide. All that first genocide happened in that country. History is so bad, but we as leaders have made it look so good. People are forgetting the history. Now we have, we have been allowed, we don't get any loans, soft loans. We don't get grants because we are rich. Mm. When we talk about distribution, they say, I ask, do you want us to do that, President Mugabe, to grab from the whites and give to the blacks? Here we are saying we have a problem of inequality. Second uh, country, maybe after South Africa and all the United States too here and there, who are so inequal, inequal in Africa because of history. We are therefore saying, we, are, we don't beg. But we are saying we are not helping. Mm. The argument to say you are, uh, what is it, uh, advanced country, because you take the GDP of the country, divide in small population, and get high per capita income, which is a theoretical thing. It doesn't reflect the reality on the ground. Because mm -hmm. Namibia has a very small population. We are, we are 2.5 now so far. But the country is vast. Mm -hmm. Now, unit cost doesn't go by population. If I'm building a road from here, 100 kilometers, and you are building one in a country with 100 million people, we are going to pay the same price, mm -hmm. unit cost. Mm -hmm. You touched upon the, um, the damage done uh, to Namibia by, uh, former, by, by colonialism. Um, where do things stand at the moment in terms of, of negotiations with Germany over reparations? Because, you know, I think it was 100,000 Herero, 10,000 Nama um, killed by soldiers uh, at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, negotiations so far have been pretty difficult. Where do things stand at the moment? Well, Namibians were killed among the most Hereros and Namas because extermination order mentioned the two. That we are talking about Hereros and Namas. Many other Namibians suffered too. But the issue is 
we as a government, it's government to government, you cannot fool yourself. The government of Germany and us started the talks. We are democratically elected government to represent the American people. And to say we don't include the people who were affected is not true. We represent all Namibians. And therefore, after a long delay, asking questions to Germans, we started these so-called negotiations. Yes, we forced the Germans to agree reluctantly there was genocide. Because they were afraid it were repercussions somewhere else. If you are committing crimes in many places, we are worried. If you give these kind of concessions, others are going to come and ask the same. So therefore, they are reluctant. They were reluctant, but they have now said, whatever you call it, yes, very bad things happen. Genocide, okay. Then, if you did that, we say, you must then apologize. You must know you did something very wrong. And they agreed to that too. They will send maybe the highest person, president to come to the parliament and apologize. So we've achieved the most important things. Money is not, life of the people is not worth money. So they offer the amount that we are disputing and telling them. That was 1.1 1 .1 billion. 1.1 billion. Mm -hmm. We are saying that, that, but what money is good for human life? 10 billion, 100 million, 100 billion, that's good. But the representatives from the, 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 some yeah, of the, the communities most affected, they think that 1.1 billion isn't enough. Yeah, it's not enough. No money is enough, I'm saying, if we talk about the lives of people. But what we are saying is it could be used in the areas to develop. People that want cash, some of the people who are talking big here around affected communities, they want cash or they can go and have their political campaigns and so on. We are saying money, whichever comes, must go to the regions known where those who were so killed by Germans are coming from. So, so if, you, if you could summarize what the next step is, what would, what would that be? Next step, I don't know. I'm, I'm waiting for my term to end. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. President Gengop reminds us not to criticize our own governments and democracies, but also remember that the West is not perfect in itself. So what do you guys think about his speech? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please share and like and subscribe because that's the way you support Kwasami as a channel, an Afrocentric channel, uh, where we try to understand um, deeper issues in African history and hopefully develop um, a collective intelligence on how we wish to build the Africa we want to see as people of Africa. See you in the next one.